Today we're going to be talking a little bit about how I find my spots before I go out uh, and physically fish the area using Google Maps. So there's a lot of things I look at and, and generally speaking a lot of you are probably looking for freshwater spots whether it be lakes, uh, cool spots of a lake that you want to target instead of the typical spots you target on the lake. In this specific episode we're going to be talking about saltwater and this isn't necessarily saltwater, this is just saltwater species that, I've, that I'm going after um, in this video. This is actually 100% fresh water, although it does not look like it. We've done a salinity test and this is actually fresh water. Uh, before actually coming to the spot, I did think there's a huge chance this is salt water. It is not. So let's get into it. The first thing I, I saw that really attracted me to the spot, and I'm going to get into this. Um, I'm going to actually show you some clips of me fishing out in this exact spot. And one of the cool things I thought was how big the sand patches are compared to other spots. If you look around here, there's a lot of weed, but there's not really a lifted area with sand uh, surrounded by hydrilla. Now, these darker areas here is what I call hydrilla. Not only what I call hydrilla, but it's actually hydrilla. So, hydrilla grows in fresh water as well as uh, very, very low salinity brackish water. And when I first came out to the spot, I did not think it could be fresh water. What I initially thought was these might be rocks, you know, mixed in with some sort of uh, uh, some sort of weeds, like you would find in uh, in salt water. But I quickly found out that this is actually fresh water. Um, and the why this is so important is because there was Mayan cichlids, which is a type of exotic uh, fish species that roams around here. Now, the reason that's important is because tarpon in this area and snook tend to eat the Mayan cichlids. It's actually one of their really um, it's actually very important to their diet and they're getting really big off eating these exotic fish. So why is the sand important? Which is the initial reason why I was brought into this area. Now you see all this coastline. I found all this coastline. Here you find a little bit of sand, nothing crazy, nothing patchy like that. That's beautiful over there. Um, and you just keep on going around here. You see some here, it's just not as in depth, it's not as detailed and it's not as consistent as that sand patch. Now, initially I did not think that this would be something to um, really take after, but after searching around, I found that it's actually really unique for the area for something to look like this. And from uh, prior fishing experiences, I've realized that these actual uh, sand patches do hold fish. Now, a lot of times they don't hold fish when there's no hydrilla around, but from past knowledge, I realized whenever there's, you know, pretty big or, you know, thick amounts of hydrilla, or seagrass for that matter, even if it's coral heads, whatever it might be, there's usually fish around and they're using this area, the sand patch area, as means to get to other sand patches. Now, the average depth here, it might look, you know, like, eh, it's hard to tell how deep this is. This is about a foot of water. You know, it's not, it's nothing more, it's nothing less, it's about a foot. Um, and that's at low tide. So let's say high tide, um, or yeah, when the tide's coming in, it's probably, you know, a foot and a half, two feet max. So it's really, really shallow. And for these bigger fish, especially that we're talking about, you know, 25 inch, uh, you know, plus uh, snook and also, you know, relatively large tarpon, it's really hard for them to move through this hydrilla like you see here. And it's very important. So what we did in this, in this uh, outing was we went along the mangroves. It's very important to stay along the mangrove line because they do provide some shelter. But that's not to say we didn't end up venturing into these little areas to catch them uh, off guard or kind of sight fish them. So the majority of time I'm on the canoe and I'm actually standing at the top casting throughout these whole entire little patches. And that's something you guys could do. Uh, you go out there on a canoe, a skiff, a kayak, whatever you got, and basically just take a, you know, take a minute, stand up and kind of look along and see if you see any black stuff. You know, because from far away, it doesn't look like a fish, but you see like a black spot that doesn't genuinely look like a patch take a cast at it. 99% of the time, it's a predatory fish coming over to another hydrilla patch, at least in this specific area is what I've noticed. So the cool thing about this is I initially would just try and hit these little mangrove areas. But by using Google Earth, I realized, you know what? Um, this And mind you, I found this spot and I didn't really think much of this. When I first found it, just, you know, wow, there's a nice little point here. I see a current change let me go ahead and go along the mangroves. Now that did work, but once I really uh, took time to, to keen in on the sand patches, that's when I started producing bigger fish um, and I started getting what I was you know, really looking for. 
um, the main the main thing that I found with this particular spot is the way this point comes out and kind of blocks the current. So nine times out of ten, I realize that once I get into this, once I'm traveling, because I kind of got to go through this whole entire area. Once I get across this whole area on canoe, it's about five miles. Um, it's pretty choppy out here. You even see white caps sometimes, um, but for the most part, it's pre it's pretty chill. But once you get into this little cove. And it's different because this little point, I went on Google Maps and I tried to see if there's another point like it. And there are little similar areas, um, but there's nothing as distinct as that little point. Um, the best thing I found was this spot right here, but it was so far that it was kind of hard to get to, especially without a trolling motor. We're completely using human power here. So I decided to look at all this coastline and there's not one break in the current. And then boom, I find this little spot right here. Now, I tried all of this. I tried all of it. Not a single bite. Not a single bite. And this is, you know, from here, I kid you not, from here, right where my mouse is, right here, to the point right here is probably X amount of miles. That's, it's really far. It's really, really far. I can't stress that enough. So all of that hard work, all of that paddling, and you're killing yourself because the wind and it's just a pain in the ass out there. Um, and you find that there's nothing under these mangroves. You know, maybe a little snook. Uh, maybe the occasional largemouth bass um, because remember this is fresh water so sometimes we do find largemouth in here who are kind of acclimated to the salinity um, but nothing we find nothing nothing on these sides nothing on these mangroves not even in this little coat but boom I find this little spot that I was talking about with the sand patch the break of the current and it was back to back to back to back tarpon snook and all of them were big you know there, there was you know the, there is always going to be smaller ones around so, but that, you know, it was still a great experience, even with the smaller ones. Um, you know, for the majority of the day, I'm throwing a twitch bait, uh, probably a mirror lure, I think it was, um, a couple other jerk baits, uh, you know, like paddle tails, um, you know, maybe like a DOA, uh, a DOA shrimp or gulp shrimps. It depends on basically the day and how the water's looking, you know, before I choose the color of, uh, of lure that I'm gonna use. But that's besides the point. The point is, after trying all this coastline here, I find nothing. But then I come across this little spot, work my way in, and right here it was dead silent. Imagine just right through here, currents ripping. Right here in this little darker area that you see ripping, just ripping. And all of a sudden, you come through here and it's like, you know, your canoe's traveling sideways like this. Let's say the mouse is the canoe. You're traveling sideways. All of a sudden you get in and boom, you could actually take horse because it's a lot calmer in here. So we have a lot of bait fish that are just flushing all throughout this main area here all this heavy currents, there's a lot of heavy current out here, a lot of water getting stirred around. All of them are kind of just drifting in to this little cove and taking shelter in the hydrilla. So I thought cove, hydrilla, point, there must be bigger fish in here feeding or nesting. So after, you know, I guess coming across this side right here, I decided to let me come into this open area and just kind of set anchor. And we have a very tiny anchor since so it's a canoe, so we're very quiet, very silent, and we're just sitting there, I'm taking casts, taking casts, and before you know it, we hook up with a tarpon right in this area. And I was sight fishing him, and I could kind of tell that he was headed towards the mangroves. And it's not its not because, you know, oh, the sand is just the magic part. It's really not. The, the majority of the fish they're going to be catching are probably in these mangroves, just taking shelter, conserving as much energy as possible, um, and staying out of the heavy current and just basically taking advantage of all the weaker, uh, smaller fish that are getting drifted in and they're picking them off. Very, very easy pickings. Um, and for the tarpon, the snook, and the bigger largemouth, it's very uh, easy to, you know, kind of not exert so much energy and, and get a meal. So a lot of them are really just picked up in here, but if you're looking to sight fish and sight cast and kind of hop around different hydrilla patches, because they are in the hydrilla patches as well, um, taking refuge and kind of feeding on those smaller fish is what I've noticed in this particular area. Mind you, every area is different. There's not you're not going to want to you're not going to run into an area that's completely the same. But all of this kind of backs out into here. So although it looks like this is all dry, this is all water. Um, there's a lot of water that runs through here. So these snook are probably hanging out about I'd say 20 yards past the coastline into here, and it provides a lot of shelter for them. And there's a lot of bait fish running through. So after countless times of trying to come out here, reach new waters, um, many trips explored this area, I realized that there's not much going on. So when you're going out there looking for you know, whether it's largemouth, snook, uh, tarpon, they kind of tend to behave similarly. But in this case, we caught tarpon and snook. So 
next time before you go out and you're hitting a lake, whether it's on kayak, you're on foot, try to look for these points. Try to look for these coves and try to look for that lighter water. Because nine times out of ten, they are hanging out in the lighter air in the lighter areas, uh, especially when the water's you know only a foot. You know, when it's a foot in depth, they need space. They can't just be mushing through deep hydrilla. When I was running the canoe through this area right through here where the mouse is, there wasn't much. Uh, there wasn't much sand. It was just a lot of vegetation. It was almost impossible to move the canoe through this. It doesn't look like it, but it really was. You have a thick layer of hydrilla rubbing against the bottom of the canoe, and it was almost like going over a carpet or like a rug. So after kind of just trying top water in this little area, I decided, you know what? Let me go to the area I saw on Google Maps, and there you had it, in the cove, out of the current, along the mangroves, sand patches, deeper water we got on Snook and Tarpa. So once again, guys, I'm going to do a couple more of these videos on how I've been tracking snook tarpon. Um, and I actually have a really cool redfish spot that I want to get into and uh, basically crack it down for everybody who's inshore fishing. And they use Google Maps a lot to find new areas and get on uh, new species of fish. So once again, guys, thank you for watching the video. And please subscribe if you enjoy this video. Subscribe if this helped you in any way, shape, or form. And leave a like and a comment. I really do appreciate the comments. I love reading them. Uh, seeing where everybody's heads at and kind of just feeding off each other's knowledge of uh, of the area, especially down here in South Florida. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.